Hello and welcome to Mobility Mastery Monday. I am Alicia and this is the place to be if you want to lose the pain, lose your fear of pain, learn to trust your body and do what you love for life. Today I want to show you a technique to release the fascia within your tibialis anterior or shin muscle and your peroneals. It's kind of going to get a little bit of both and you're going to need a lacrosse ball for this one and some type of weight plate. Um, so you might need to be in a gym. I've been trying to figure out a way to do this technique that mimics what I do with my private clients for like six months. <laughs> and I finally figured it out today. Um, but you are going to need these two things. I don't really know how to mimic it without them. Um, very, very important that you're actually using a lacrosse ball. Uh, a tennis ball will not work. It will not, it just, I don't think it'll work for this. I mean, you could always try it. It's probably not going to do any harm. Um, but the reason you want a lacrosse ball is it's hard, but there's a little bit of give to it um, and it's grippy. So it is going to grip the area that you're working and actually pin that fascia correctly and allow you to actually release it um, and unstick it. Um, a tennis ball, or excuse me, a, a golf ball is gonna slide around too much and it's too small. This is like a perfect setup here. Um, so that's gonna go right in there. Um, and a baseball is too big, also slippery. So please do yourself a favor. These are super cheap and you can get them on Amazon or anywhere on the internet, um, even if they don't play lacrosse in your country. I highly recommend getting one. You're gonna make use of it all the time. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna go after the tibialis anterior or shin muscle and the peroneals, kind of right in between both. And the reasons you might wanna do this are if you have cramping on the bottoms of your feet, this is gonna be a really good one for you. Um, if you have tendonitis on the tops of the, your feet, if you have shin splints, or if you have a strained or pulled soleus muscle um, or inside of your calf here, uh, this technique is good for all of those. Okay, so this is gonna be a little bit awkward, um, but it actually works really well once you kind of get the setup right. So what you're targeting, um, you're definitely gonna wanna go after the thick, meaty part of that TA, tibialis anterior, right at the top, and then we're gonna work our way down. So I'm going after that spot first. So I'm gonna kind of put the ball there and then get the weight plate right on top of that ball. Um, I have a 25 pound weight here. I think anything less than that probably isn't gonna give you the weight you need. Um, the reason I have a weight plate on there is to get proper compression. Um, if you just have the ball on there, it's gonna not feel like much of anything, it won't do much. Okay, so once I've kind of angled it, you should feel a sensation there. It should feel kind of tender, a little bit sore, um, and then you're going to point and flex your foot. Now that's really good. <laughs> um, so you want to make sure you're really pointing when you go down and then really flexing all the way up. You want to use that tibialis anterior to pull your foot up all the way. And then you're going to want to rotate in a little bit and point and flex at that angle. If nothing feels sore to you, either this isn't a problem for you, this area doesn't need to get released, or you haven't found the right spot. So that's actually like really good. <laughs> Apparently I'm a little sore there and need this. So then I would just kind of work down a little bit. Oh, that's even better. <laughs> I kind of think this one feels strangely good. Maybe that's just me. Um, it's going to be the absolute best result if you rotate in. So you want to stay rotated in while flexing and pointing. Or you could do some circles. But it's a little hard to do that with the weight plate on here. This pointing and flexing with it rotated in is quite spectacular. Now, I do want to say, you want to make sure you're not on your shin bone. Definitely don't want to be on that bone. But you're going to be right next to it. So, working my way down. This is still, like, really good. Apparently I need this. I've been doing a lot of trail running and hiking. So I would spend 20 to 40 seconds on each spot. It's typically what I recommend. Make sure you find the right spot first before spending those 20 to 40 seconds on it and then stop and go to the next spot. 
So basically you're just gonna work your way down that TA and into the peroneals a little bit until there's no sensation. So you could go, you know, all the way down as far as here if you want, if there's sensation there and it feels productive to you. So I don't know, that could mean anywhere between three and six spots. Generally, most people are gonna have three to five, um, but go ahead and figure out your body for you and what you need. Um, you'll need less as you go on. If you're gonna use this for an issue that I've named like cramping on the bottoms of the foot, um, tendonitis on the tops of the feet, or a strain in the soleus um, or shin splints, then I would actually do this once a day, spending no more than 20 to 40 seconds on each spot once you have the spot, and do it once a day for a week like that and you should see a significant improvement in whatever you are experiencing. If you want exclusive updates emailed to you every week from Mobility Mastery, you can sign up at our newsletter on mobilitymastery.com. If you want new uh, episodes here on YouTube emailed to you, you can subscribe here on YouTube. Um, and if you like this video, then please like and share it and click the link below for the full blog post. As always, I hope you're learning to trust your body so you can adventure through life with confidence. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next time on Mobility Mastery Monday.